Good day everyone, so I'm furious at the Genshin Impact developers because they're so out of touch with their game. Basically here at GameSpot.com they spoke to the Genshin Impact developers and they asked them a very simple question. Currently, the Spiral Abyss is the only true endgame content for players at high adventure ranks. In other words, people that have been playing for a long time and this is kind of important. Are there any plans to release new permanent end game content in the same vein? And the basic answer is no. So this is what the devs have said. The Spiral Abyss is one of the most effective ways for players to test out their party composition and combat strength. If we design another type of permanent end game that's similar to Spiral Abyss, it might end up creating excessive anxiety for our players. Not everyone is interested in Must Grief, but don't you worry, you know, we released a new trading card game, you know, and that's going to be more interesting for gameplay in future, and it's just like, really? Okay, so there's a couple of things I want to comment on. A, the Spiral Abyss is not the most effective way to test out party composition and combat strength, simply because there's not enough con content in the Spiral Abyss to test a couple of things like the survivability of your team, sustained DPS versus burst DPS. The Spiral Abyss only really tests um, a certain flavor of a month and then it's the same content for six weeks and most end game plays, which is what we're asking for here, can only really play floor 12 because floor 9 to 11 are a joke. They don't create anxiety, they literally are a laughing stock, they create the opposite of anxiety. You feel good for playing those modes because you can curb stomp it and just run away with the Primo Gems in a couple of minutes. So no, I do not agree with them. So here is the big part that developers are completely like missing. Your entire economy inside your game is predicated on two simple things. Get a character. Once you've gotten your character, you level up the character. In other words, the entirety of Genshin Impact, aside from the story, revolves around farming bosses, materials, exploring the open world so that you can level up your characters and the reason you level up your characters is not just to make them look cute. They're not going to look any cuter or anything's going to change about it. There's actually no reward. There's no special outfit we unlock. None of that. No voice lines or whatever. The only thing we get for leveling up our characters is quite simply the fact that they're now stronger in combat. And we can use them in more combat related events. So if at the end of the day you're a high ranking AR player and you've got multiple characters at level 90 and so on. Wouldn't it be really, really nice if there was some sort of mode that could enable me to play with all of these characters as, or as many of these characters as possible and truly test whether my builds and all the time and effort I've put in has been worth it. And honestly, the Spiral Abyss is an abject failure of a game mode to do this. Because just think about it. Someone like me that spends in the game that's got a C6 R5 Yelon What's my problem? My problem is I clear the spiral abyss, let's say floor one, in 10 seconds. Someone else comes, they're using a child international, they're very hyper optimized, but everything's at C0. We both clear in about 10 seconds. Now, what reward was there for me to clear the spiral abyss? Because essentially, if the DPS requirement was, let's say, 100k, and my team does 300k, but the other guy does about 120k. The end result is that we both clear in the exact same time, but I'm not rewarded for the fact that I've got characters that are stronger. I'm not rewarded for the fact that I'm supporting your game and any sort of capacity. So basically you're giving the middle finger to your longtime players as, and especially your more whale and dolphin players. It's, it's just so, so sad. It, it really is unbelievable. And I think if you think or feel that the majority of the players have anxiety, then it is quite simple to deal with anxiety. All you need to do is you need to expand on this talent reference and the artifact sort of reference guides and what you do is you go let's say to the beginning you go to character archive or tutorials or wherever you want you can add like a big button here and all you need to do is like create let's say a Genshin lab and what the Genshin lab does is it says oh you want Yelon okay this is the top recommended team for her oh you want to see what sort of weapons might be good for her here's sort of a bit of a weapon ranking that you can sort of pull in and hey let's pull in your Yelon and do a bit of like stats and so on it 
it is so easy for you guys in a friendly manner to let's say just partner with the theory crafting community and get some good solid recommended advice and guidance that you can give in a very easily digestible way to new players so that when they have anxiety so that when they play in the spiral abyss and you d your systems detect that this player is struggling you can give them an in-game resource that shows them what they can do differently and take some of that anxiety away. I mean, your sister game, Honkai Impact, does this. It shows videos in games of how to use these characters. It says character recommendation. It says on Stigmata, here's your top pick. It says on the weapons, here's the top pick. Or it says, you know, if you don't want this sort of for the abyss, here is an alternative economic build that you can use. Why not have that system in Genshin? Instead of withholding content, actively introduce systems to take away the supposed anxiety because what you're doing by not giving us in-game content is you're being disrespectful to your long-term players and you're missing out something else as well. All of these, oops, wrong button, um, all of these events that you've given in Genshin Impact, again, wrong button, there we go. All of these events, the ballads and all of these other good things, story quests and so on, create anxiety. I can't tell you how anxious it makes me when there's like a new quest a new archon quest and two days later you post on youtube some of the cutscenes, and that sort of spoils it for me it feels like i'm supposed to rush otherwise everyone else is going to sort of see that content before me and i'm going to be out of touch or the story might be spoiled in some sort of way that is stressful that is anxiety these limited time events are in anxiety inducing i know for some people it might not be but for us that are full-time like workers and so on we only have have the weekends to play so when you have limited time events especially like the golden Ar archipelago in 2.8 with so many puzzles and so many quests it becomes so freaking overwhelming for someone to try and get all the rewards it's just like man it's like you think the spiral abyss is like problematic look if someone's really struggles they'll just be like meh i give up and that's it they've got other things to do in the game because if they're struggling with the spiral abyss then there should be a lot of other content that they can still clear i'm definitely sure of it but I mean, the other side of your game, the forced story completion, the forced like events, and if you don't play it because you have a real life outside of the game, if you don't use your resin, you sort of lose it. If you don't do your daily commissions, you don't get primo gems. That's anxiety inducing. That is what actually ruins the gameplay experience. And that to me is just an abject failure. So introducing a trading card game it's just going to add more anxiety on top of that. It's just going to be another thing that I have to do. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the Primo Gems. I'm not going to get the characters. But don't worry, there's no need to get characters because what's the point of building them? There's, there's no in-game content. It's just, I don't know. The devs are clearly clueless about this. So if you want my recommendation, and if you've been sticking along for, um, so far, Put in one permanent in-game mode, Mondstadt. Put in, in the Chasm another game mode like in 2.7. Put in the Mystic Dungeon as a permanent in-game mode for um, in Azuma. Put in a new in-game, let's say, Dungeon Raid or whatever here in the desert in Sumeru. And that's how you do it.